Welcome back to One Nation Weather, and thank you so much for taking time out of your day to tune into my video. This is going to be a lot more raw than my normal videos, and normally I've got audio cuts, normally I've got all sorts of crazy edits. In this case, I just want to bring it back to the headlines with my straightforward analyzation of the models. No crazy edits going on here. This is just going to be my raw perspective on what is going on for this week across the United States. Let's get into it here. The headlines are that I'm going to be covering the general weather overview across the U.S. for this week. That includes a look at future Hurricane Helene. In fact, that's what I really want to target here, getting rid and busting some of the myths and hype surrounding this storm with the latest National Hurricane Center forecast being covered in this video. Plus, I've got details on future Hurricane Helene's timing breakdown and model comparison, plus what impacts I can already pin down now about Helene. That is all coming up in this video. Let's get right into it with the general pattern overview. All right, here we go, jumping right in with that European model for the week ahead. You can see that I've got it stopped right here as I film this video. Perfect timing. This video is going to be released around 7, 8 p.m. Eastern Time on our Sunday. Times that I show throughout this video are in Eastern Time, and that's exactly what this is, 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time on our Sunday. On screen now, you can see we've got a front drape from the Midwest all the way back down to the South Central Plains. By the time we go into our Monday, September 23rd, 2024, into the afternoon and evening hours, look at this front that we're going to have continuing to make its way to the east. Overall states anywhere from around New York all the way back down to Texas seeing the impacts of this front with showers and thunderstorms into the afternoon hours. Generally isolated severe weather could be possible, but overall we're just going to be watching the isolated heavy rain and flood threat from this front and not much more. No crazy winds, no crazy excessive impacts. There we go out of our Monday into our Tuesday. We see a low develop on the back side of this front. This is going to be the last real system to impact the U.S. before we start talking about the tropics here from Michigan all the way as far south as the South Carolina, North Carolina area, looking at showers and thunderstorms into our Tuesday afternoon. Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia also getting in on the mix on that. But I want you to focus on some of this energy starting to dive down here into the central plains. This is what's going to kind of cut in and pick up what is likely going to be Hurricane Helene down the road. Let me go ahead and play things out so that you can kind of see how this occurs. We're going to have that little piece of energy dive into the southern United States. We start to see the emergence of our tropical entity by the time we go towards our late Wednesday into our Thursday, September 26th at the bottom of the screen. Probably going to be some sort of hurricane or forming into one by the time we go into our Thursday based on most model guidance. And models have been trending faster with the general landfall time frame for this storm. As, as of this point, it looks like it will be some time Thursday afternoon, evening, or into our early Friday. And notice how it's really going to interact with that other low that's going to be around Arkansas and bringing heavy rain as far south as Mississippi. In this general area, it's going to have to kind of cut in behind that old front and move in ahead of this new low. So generally that puts places like the Alabama coastline, the Florida Panhandle, and southern Georgia really at the highest risk for direct impacts right at landfall or right after landfall. I'll break some of those down in just a minute in more detail. But notice from there we really begin to see Helene move even further inland. And in fact, I want to go ahead and get right into the details on Helene and everything in terms of scenarios around it. The first thing you really need to know about Helene is that it is not developed just yet in the seven-day tropical graphical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida. As of 2 p.m. update, it's probably an increase by the time we go to 8 p.m. right as I post this video. On our Sunday here, we are looking at an 80% chance of development in the next seven days for this storm. It is more of a 30 to 40% chance in the next 48 hours. So into our Monday and Tuesday, it only has a very 30 to 40% chance of development. As it passes by that eastern tip of Mexico, the western tip of Cuba, it's probably going to thread the needle between those two areas. That means more water interaction. And then we're going to see this move up into the Gulf. You can see that trajectory already moving towards that Alabama or Florida panhandle coastline for that landfall. Just by looking at this graphic, here is what the National Hurricane Center has to say in terms of its discussion about this storm disorganized showers and thunderstorms located over the northwestern caribbean sea and portions of central america are associated with a broad area of low pressure environmental conditions appear favorable for development of the system and a tropical depression or storm is likely to form during the next few days while moving northward across the northwestern caribbean and gulf of mexico regardless of development this disturbance is expected to produce heavy rains over portions of central america interests in the northwestern Caribbean, Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, and western Cuba should monitor the progress of this feature. Later this week, the storm is forecast to generally move northward across the Gulf, and interests along the northern and northeastern Gulf Coast should also monitor the progress. Here's a look at exactly what those models, and specifically the European ensemble members are basically like a group of some models, all averaged out with that black line there. These are what they are showing by the time we go to the end of this week, through the end of this week, I should say. 
Overall, you can really see that since I posted the most recent video, which was just yesterday on our Saturday here, which was a much more highly edited video, things have really shifted to where there's only one true scenario for a landfall, and it's really going to be right up in this area in here, and really the circle be, could be even a little bit smaller than that, at least based on this current, sky, current guidance. Unless something changes really crazily, it looks like the western Florida Panhandle, or more like the central Florida Panhandle, will see the most direct impacts from the storm. So if you live in this area, you know anybody who lives in this area, or in some of the areas where the track line goes from there, you are expecting some pretty significant impacts. You need to make sure that you are either telling yourself what to do in this situation and knowing your plan, or you are reaching out to whoever lives in this area and making sure that they know their plan, their evacuation routes, all of that kind of stuff. Also, of course, on the entire eastern side of this black line, we're probably going to continue to see plenty of significant impacts as the storm tracks to the north. That could include tropical tornadoes, flooding in the bands, all of those kinds of impacts. So make sure you are ready for that as well in these communities here. Before I get into the model comparison to really show you exactly where the storm could go, what the timing is going to be, what the impacts are going to be, and when, I want to show you the model intensity guidance from tropicaltidbits.com, which really has a floor of around category one to as high as a ceiling of around category three. So anywhere from cat one to cat three being shown on this graphic. I've seen some models that want to go ballistic and bring this as high as a category four storm. So prepare for the worst if you are in that Florida panhandle, that Alabama coastline, the far western parts of the Florida peninsula as well. Any of those spots that border the Gulf of Mexico in that general vicinity, please be ready and treating this like it is going to be the strongest possible storm because you always want to be over prepared rather than under prepared. With that in mind, I want to go ahead and jump into the weather model comparison for this storm. Starting out here into our late Wednesday, September 25th of 2024, I can tell you with certainty at this time that the most significant impacts of what is likely going to be Helene at this point will not be onsetting anywhere in the United States, but we are going to have this energy here to the west of where Helene is expected to make landfall. The upper level low associated with that somewhere over here. And that's really, again, going to be kind of pulling Helene up like this. And that is exactly kind of how the trajectory of the impacts are going to go from Florida up to Georgia, probably up here towards the southern Appalachians, and then maybe curling back towards that other low. Here we go, though, playing things out out of our Wednesday evening into our Thursday. Throughout the day Thursday, the entirety of the Florida Peninsula, the western parts of that peninsula as well here into Tampa, as far south as Bradenton, back on out here into the central parts of Florida and Orlando. We're going to be watching some of these bands. We could see some isolated tornadoes and definitely some flooding and gusty winds as these move their way on through. Obviously, the main concern is with that center of low pressure, though that's probably going to come on shore, at least according to this model, lining up with that ensemble guidance somewhere in the central Florida panhandle, moving up towards a place, say, like Tallahassee for that landfall. This has a 983 millibar low, which would probably be a strong tropical storm, maybe a low-end Cat 1 hurricane or maybe towards a Cat 2 to hurricane at the highest strength depending on you know what that pressure lines up with the winds because that can vary a little bit that's thursday night when that landfall occurs that's when the worst impacts move through there far southern alabama southern georgia by the time we go out of thursday night into our early friday september 27th look at this already by six seven eight in the morning very heavy rainfall all across parts of georgia south carolina we could see some tornadic bands moving out of south florida or excuse me northern florida and into georgia and the carolinas by this point and then from there, the impacts continue really breaking up, although we could still be watching some isolated tornadoes and some flooding moving up into the southern Appalachians from eastern Tennessee over here into parts of North Carolina, um, into Virginia, as well as even into Kentucky into our late Friday, into our early Saturday. Look at that, though. We see this storm. Notice how it tries to kind of move over towards that other low. They do a little bit of that Fujiwara tropical effect around each other, which is just like a dance low pressures do around each other. And there we go, this storm is pretty much history by the time we go towards Saturday and Sunday with this solution. Here's the latest GFS, and again, I don't really show you these models to scare you, but I do want you to be at least scared enough to be paying attention to this if you live down here in some of the immediate impact zones in particular. Again, throughout the day Thursday, watching those isolated tornado, isolated flooding impacts for a lot of the Florida panhandle and as far south as the peninsula. Here we go into the afternoon and evening hours Thursday, some point late Thursday into Thursday night is the most likely landfall time, right around Tallahassee and the beaches just south. This has a Cat 3, Cat 4, going on Cat 5 hurricane trying to make landfall. I don't think that's the most likely scenario given the setup, and I'll show you why in just a second, but overall, the timing is pretty similar, so somewhere around that Florida panhandle, late Thursday into Thursday night is when this landfall is expected. Here we go, southern Alabama into parts of Georgia as well as South Carolina, feeling those worst impacts into early Friday. And then by Friday, late in the day and into our Saturday, we are literally seeing the storm break up 
impacts waning down at a rapid rate as this tries to swirl back on over, just like what the European model shows, to that other low. All right, taking a look at the steering and why this storm probably won't necessarily go as high as an intense major hurricane, but could at least touch that strength. Let's play things out as we go throughout this week. You can see overall nothing crazy going on across the country until we see this guy slide into the central U.S., this is around late Tuesday. We're watching Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas with this upper level low pressure as the jet stream kind of digs down like this. That increases the chance that the storm will get pulled up towards that jet stream in the manner I described earlier, but it also increases the wind shear moving on through. If you got the jet stream cutting through just like this and the storm is coming up just like this, Overall, that's very favorable if you're looking at a severe weather standpoint with, say, a low-pressure system on land, but for a tropical system with cloud tops that are trying to bubble up as high as they can, you know, we're seeing these tops being sheared off in the atmosphere from west to east. That is not as encouraging for a major hurricane necessarily as, you know, the setup the GFS model indicates despite all this going on. So I'm not quite sure why the GFS shows a major hurricane. Certainly be prepared for that, though, because that is technically the ceiling of this particular event. And again, that is upon landfall I'm discussing. So before I close things out, I want to jump back over to the GFS model, kind of give you a look at what it's showing in terms of the wind trajectory, because I think this and where the heaviest rain are going to be, that's what I can pinpoint the most right now, and that is what I want to kind of close this video out with. Here we go into our Thursday. Most spots not seeing the winds pick up. I do want to point out that if you live there through a lot of central Florida, we could at least see some 30, 40 mile per hour wind gusts at the minimum at some point on Thursday. Heavy rain, gusty winds, those tropical tornadic bands, be prepared for those into our Thursday night when this thing makes landfall, no matter when it is, whether it's Thursday at 8 p.m., whether it's Thursday at 11 p.m., whether it is Friday morning at 5 a.m., we're probably going to see that core come on shore somewhere in that western Florida panhandle unless something drastically changes. Again, models can change. Generally, it looks like the biggest core of some of those 50-plus mile per hour wind gusts will be in this zone. Again, I don't know if we're going to see that 100-plus mile per hour core coming on shore in Florida and even into some parts of far southwestern Georgia like this model indicates. Being honest, the setup is not as favorable as it could be for a major hurricane of this caliber to be making landfall. But again, prepare as if this is what is going to happen. This is definitely the worst-case scenario. From there, we see wind gusts. Look at that, 70 miles per hour pushing on up easily through Atlanta. Again, this is why I think this is a little bit of an extreme output. Here we go through northern parts of South Carolina, western North Carolina, and then up there into Tennessee. By late Friday, this model has the winds dying out. But overall, you can kind of see the trajectory of where that wind flow goes. In fact, let me turn on the wind gust swath. That general swath looks like it's really going to come up there through west central Florida into some parts of south central Georgia and then begin slowly dying out once you get into northern Georgia, the western Carolinas, and up as far uh, to the north as southern Kentucky, where we could at least see some 30 to 40 mile per hour gusts. The GFS model in terms of its total precipitation, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Here come those rainfall totals and rates. Notice this, there's that swath, and again, it looks like that heaviest rainfall is going to make its way right there through Florida, Alabama, Georgia, up into South Carolina, before slowly fizzling out. We could also see some very heavy rain to the west of this from that upper level system. It's somewhere around Arkansas and Missouri. All right, now we are back to this screen. This is just that trajectory line for the center of the storm. Again, impacts can go outside of the center of the storm. Overall, this is all the data and really that I want to share with you right now, at least on our Sunday evening, September 22nd of 2024. If you have any further comments, questions, concerns, any feedback about this video, even just drop that down below in that section. That is what the comments are for. I love to interact with my viewers and would love to interact with you specifically there. That is it for this video, though. Make sure you're checking out Weatherball for a free trial to the awesome weather model maps that I use throughout my videos. Uh, I will catch you in the next update, and let me know if you like updates like this, because I will definitely do another one like this, if so, very soon. Hit that subscribe button, I'll see you in the next update. One Nation Weather.